William Afton always comes back, and you know what, that's not a good thing, not anymore. With his new form of burn trap being present in the true ending of Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, we've, we've come to know even more about this character's story, but not the parts that we actually want. So, uh, let's keep counting down the top 10 things we know about William Afton in Security Breach, again. Sorry, I took this list from Amanda. Number 10, Ultimate Custom Night. Now that Security Breach has released and messed with the timeline once more, we know that Ultimate Custom Night was supposed to be, like, during. Okay, look, we know where it's intended to be, or at least where it had to be because of these new revelations. The original concept was that it was William's personal hell, but the Man in Room 1280 made some people believe that it was him, uh, like what he was seeing in a coma, like how Crying Child was in a coma for the main gameplay of FNAF 4. But now we know that Ultimate Custom Night is, is simply what William is seeing while he's unconscious in the recharge station. It's the only thing that really makes sense if we think about it because you can't really go to hell if, you know, you're not dead or if you're your soul is possessing an animatronic, you kinda need your soul to not have a tether for Crowley to snatch it up and drag it down to the infinite waiting line that is hell, so he kinda can't be in hell until he's actually gone. In a nine, impossible. While Thanos might be inevitable, William should be impossible. Or, okay, well, maybe William's not impossible, but Glitch Trap at this point certainly should be. With everything we've seen in these games, possession and anything having to do with such mostly comes from a dead person, or someone who soon dies after pouring their agony into something. So how could Glitch Trap be a thing if William still has his body and the Spring Trap suit? Unless Help Wanted takes place after Security Breach, which is also impossible because the ending of Help Wanted is what causes us to be able to free Vanny in the good ending, or I guess the best ending. And because, you know, Princess Quest was ported from a mobile game into arcade cabinets in this one, so after Security Breach we know that Glitch Trap should be impossible. And things got complicated yet again. Great. And it ain't virus. While Glitch Trap may seemingly be impossible, we do know that William in his robot form does have some form of coded virus that he can use and control, since he starts trying to take over Freddy basically instantly. And if that's the case, this could explain Glitch Trap and subsequently Vanny, because if Glitch Trap was just like William holding his hand to the game while it was being played or something, it kinda gets rid of the whole two versions of Afton thing that seemingly still mind boggles me. So it, 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 it could be an explanation, but it would also imply, however, that the Vanny version of Vanessa is in fact a robot, and it would seem like there are two versions if we look at the rooftop ending and the security breach office scene, where we need to escape before Vanny gets to us, because if we look at the TVs, whoever's talking can be seen, meaning that Vanessa would have to have changed awfully quickly into her Vanny suit to pull off the switch in this time. Plus it explains how he's able to control her, because you know, she's a robot. I, I can't really be controlled by a computer virus, so... Well, I mean, I probably could. <laughs> and it's seven, future villain. After the canon ending, the blob ends up grabbing William and then we don't know what happens to him, okay? There's unused death animations for Afton in the game files, but they are unused, so we can't really take them as canon. But in the books, Elizabeth leaves Afton for dead, so maybe that's the case here. Like, the blob stops him from leaving and assures his death, like, just, like, rings out his neck. I mean, it's, it's certain that the antagonist wanted to be left obscure since we kind Kinda killed it at figuring things out this time around. But with someone new coming to take over, it's always a good idea to have multiple directions for them to go. Like how they can pretty much go anywhere with the Spider-Man movies now thanks to No Way Home. So while we don't know for sure how Afton fits into the next game, or even if he does, after Security Breach we know that we could be seeing him again very soon. Depending on how soon the next game comes out at least. We expect too much from the 87 day sequel that started off this thing. Scott, you shouldn't have done that. I mean, I get why you did it because like, Bite of 87 Seven, but still, you shouldn't have done it. And it's six, animatronic. I've denied that William Afton is an animatronic forever. I never put him on the scariest FNAF animatronics list or whatnot because I didn't believe that he was one. He was a guy controlling a suit being kept alive by the one you should not have killed. Thus, him being a man with robotic enhancements and not an animatronic. However, now, after Security Breach, it looks like I can finally stop saying that, since from the looks of it, Burn Trap is actually dead. And while this could mean that he's allowed to be Glitch Trap, William is still trying to take control of Freddy, thus us knowing that he's possessed that animatronic suit like the original five missing kids possessed the original five animatronics. It's kind of poetic. Since while his jaw is visible, the rest of his body seems to have burnt up in the FNAF 6 fire, resulting in his weight being supported by the endoskeleton. That, that just kind of proves that he's possessed. 
possess the robot. Which also makes sense with the way that he walks, since now, like, he shambles, and he's like, because he's not used to walking without the support of his full body and the animatronics, so, like, you know. He was also, like, a, like, a 90-year-old man at this point, so I can get why he shambles. He's fully possessed the animatronic now. Burn Trap is the first version of Spring Trap or Scrap Trap or William Afton that is an animatronic. Halfway through into number five, the inside. We know at this point that Afton has to have someone inside Fazbear Entertainment still working in his best interests. The suggestion for Vanessa as Night Guard came from the top, meaning that they're high up, as we learned from one of the lore duffel bags, and influential enough in the company to build the pizza plex on top of the FNAF 6 pizzeria so that William wouldn't be randomly found by some crazy kids looking for a thrill in a pizzeria. They'd be found by a crazy kid hiding inside an animatronic in a pizzeria. Since that sort of thing happens way too often in this series. Which begs the additional question, is this because they're related? Is this because they're related, they know each other, or is Afton controlling more than one person with this virus? But either way, with everything that's lining up for him, there is no way it's an accident. Oh no, not in this series. In any series, I would still find this to be a little too much, but in FNAF, there is a 0.000 negative 1% chance that this is a coincidence. Okay, there's no way that this kind of thing worked out this well for this character especially. Hell no. And for recharge. William needing to recharge is certainly something that's interesting from a game perspective now that we know more about what's been going on. Perhaps the recharge stations were built because Afton needed one. And the horrible animatronics needing to get in a recharge station every hour is because William needed an excuse to have one actually made so that they could bring it down for him. Because like, I'm sure it took more than an hour to dig that tunnel. And there is a recharge station in that area because of that. But William needs to recharge now seemingly, making me think that we won't really have to deal with him for much longer until like the MCU decides that FNAF is also in the Marvel Universe and then Afton gets an arc reactor because that's definitely gonna happen at this point. Disney's gonna be like, FNAF? I want it. And then the next person's gonna sell it and then boom, MCU. Getting close to the end of number three, escape. After security breach, we also know for a fact that Afton did not escape the FNAF 6 pizzeria like everyone was assuming because he was in front of the flames while all the other animatronics were behind it or inside it. Now, uh, do I think that he tried to leave? Yes. But do I think that he might have intentionally stayed? Maybe. More on that soon. But we know that Afton, along with the other animatronics from FNAF 6 that are now part of the blob, did not make it out of the simulated pizzeria. Since that is the pizzeria ruins that we see before making our way down to the actual, like, area where Afton is. Like, the Freddy Fazbear's Pizza we enter after getting out of the elevator is the proof we need. Notice the rectangular stage with a smaller one next to it, the plate colors, the stools, the tables, and even the floor look the same. It also explains why we can find more retro and other posters around, because we also had access to those in FNAF 6. And ultimately, in a number two, the Man Room 1280. After the events of Security Breach, I think that it's actually finally making sense of the whole Man Room 1280 thing. My original issue with this was that if William still had a physical form in Security Breach and was in a charging station, how could the whole Ultimate Custom Night in Man Room 1280 to Glitch Trap possessing Vanny really work? And while I don't have an explanation for how William was both sentient code and alive in FNAF 9, or alive air quotes. I have worked out a timeline of events here. Perhaps William wasn't ever sentient code at all, and it was just some form of remnant or agony infused virus that was able to infect minds. But also, the events of the games and stories must now be FNAF 6, Ultimate Custom Night, Security Breach, with Man in Room 1280 taking place after Security Breach. Ultimate Custom Night would no longer be his coma fever dream, it would instead be what his mind is doing before we waken up in Security Breach, since coming out of that recharge station would end up being him him beating 50-20 mode, unless we're totally wrong about what Ultimate Custom Night is, in which case, I have no f***ing clue what's going on, but yeah, so Man in Room 1280 is what happened to William after the blob gets him. At least, that's the closest thing we can do, we can say, right now. And finally, in a number one, lied about Remnant. In yesterday's video, I talked about how what we know about Remnant must be a lie, and the explanation of that, link in the iCard. However, the thing is, three times we've tried to burn William, and three times he survived. And while that could just be the whole he always comes back thing, this time around, we see that everyone from the FNAF 6 fire seemingly survived. While they are together in the form of the blob, there are still the masks of the puppets 
puppet and baby present inside it, meaning that the other animatronics also came back. But as far as we know, that shouldn't have been possible. But that's because now we know that William lied about being able to destroy Remnant with fire, as a way I'm sure to make Henry think that there was a way to stop him. But William knew that this wouldn't really kill him, and he got exactly what he wanted. He even got Henry to kill himself in the fire as well to make sure that nobody remembered this place. And if William knew that fire wouldn't kill him, but heard Henry was going to stay, why wouldn't he stay? Like if he left, Henry would have left too. And if he is able to hear the final speech, like we assume, considering how Henry tells him to go to hell, he would also have heard, and for you, my brave volunteer, who somehow found this job listing not intended for you, uh, blah blah blah, I'm assuming you're staying, so am I, okay? William knew that he wouldn't die, but the person hunting him would have died. That's an easy way to finish off your longest adversary. You just stay put, you know you're not gonna die, you're gonna suffer a little bit, but you know you're not gonna permanently die and you're good. F***ing genius. That's all the time we have for today, friends. Thank you all so much for watching. I have been and shall remain Gonna Monroe, and I'll see you in another video. Back at the studio, baby!